GPS for the prostate is, is a, a term that Calypso came up with um, to describe the technology, but it really accurately describes how this technology works. It really is GPS, in this case for the prostate. You know, prostate cancer is the most common non-skin cancer that occurs in men in the United States. And it's currently tied with colorectal cancer um, as the tied for the second and third leading cause of cancer deaths in American men. That being said, we have made dramatic progress in the treatment of prostate cancer. It's a tool that we use to accurately target on a real-time basis the radiation treatment. Um, the radiation is still the radiation whether you do that with a 3D conformal technique or more commonly today with an IMRT technique. That's the radiation. The Clipso makes certain though that we get the radiation where we intended it to be delivered in the first place. The Calypso is the targeting tool for the quote-unquote smart bomb, which after all is what a smart bomb is. It's supposed to accurately identify the target and minimize the risk of collateral damage. And that's exactly what CLIPS allows us to do. By accurately targeting the radiation, it allows us a much uh, greater chance of destroying the prostate cancer while minimizing the collateral damage to adjacent things such as the rectum and the bladder. And it, it ends up that there's actually several causes of prostate motion um, that occur all of the time. And that can include even just the patient laying on the table and breathing more deeply is going to cause that prostate to move up and down. Or if the patient moves on the table, obviously the prostate's going to move. But also more subtle things such as um, intestinal motion, including rectal motion, or what we call peristaltic motion, where just the contraction of the muscle tissue in the rectum causes that prostate to move since it's adjacent to the rectum. Or if the bladder is filling, as that bladder fills, it will displace the prostate. So then the question started to come around, how do we correct for that motion of the prostate that's occurring during, for example, the 10 to 15 minutes that it's taking to deliver that day's worth of radiation. And they came up with something that they called an electromagnetic transponder beacon. And this was something that was placed into the prostate, very analogous to what would be done when you were doing a prostate biopsy in the urologist's office. Only this case, instead of taking tissue sample out, a total of three beacons were placed into the prostate and left there permanently. The other part of the Calypso system involved a detector array that was positioned over the patient during treatment. And this detector array did two things. It developed a low level magnetic field. When you expose that beacon to a low level magnetic field, it would actually cause that beacon to emit a radio frequency signal. And by doing so, it has three points of reference, so it allows the targeting technology to locate the prostate in three-dimensional space. What's really unique about the Calypso system is that it allows us to correct for the motion that occurs when the treatment is actually being delivered. And that we refer to as intrafractional motion. Most of the other strategies that have looked at intrafractional targeting have used technology that really were not real time. From the time you took the localization um, image to the time that you actually determined where that was, perhaps two or three minutes went by. The Calypso system, because it uses the radio frequency signal, there's no subjectivity, there's no film image processing that is required, and it's literally instantaneous. 
the system works on a frequency of 10 hertz. So what that means is 10 times a second you are continuously getting updated information on where that prostate is located in three-dimensional space. There's a few uh, situations where Calypso may not be appropriate. If somebody has uh, a replacement hip procedure such as a metal, metal hip prosthesis, patients who have metal hip prosthesis are not candidates for Calypso. Other targeting technologies exist, but Calypso is not appropriate for them. If people have an implanted medical device, such as a defibrillator or a pacemaker, we believe at least currently that that's a relative contraindication to using Calypso. And because this detector array is close to the patient's abdomen and pelvis when the patient is laying on the table, if somebody is too thick front to back, they may not be a good candidate for Calypso. Um, the one thing that won't, will not happen if you have your Calypso beacons placed, they stay in there permanently, but nobody is going to be able to track your whereabouts with a satellite. Worry about your smartphone for that.